theatrical release. Snoop Dogg, the big homies on board as a producer. Uh, we got this red carpet. We got so much magic and energy. And, you know, we haven't had an event like this on the West Coast since Straight Outta Compton. And, um, you know, Colors, Minister Society, uh, Poetic Justice set it off. Uh, straight out of Compton, training day. Um, and this happens to be the most diverse film of any South Central LA film. So shout out to my, the king himself, right? My brother, John Singleton, who put me on, baby boy. Um, so I'm just grateful, you know, when I say the most diverse cast, only I can say that. This is the Fast and the Furious of South Central Cinema. Gonna be on the edge of your seat. It's a heist movie, it's a crime thriller. It's, it's a real crazy movie. And I think in my mind, we've already won. And all I want is for the world to get out there and experience this movie. Labor Day weekend, there's nothing else that matters as much as 1992. So don't be 30 years old trying to get your tickets at the last minute. Be out there sitting on the front row with your girlfriend for date night rubbing your neck because you're up in there watching the movie like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I can't wait for the world to finally get a hold of this magic called 1992. I lived this in 92, yeah. So this was a God wink moment. 30 years later, here we are. One of the reasons was I actually lived through 1992, so I understood, you know, a couple of things that actually happened in that movie, and I felt like the story and, you know, the, the great acting and the great directing, I wanted to be a part of it in any way I could, and it just felt like it was a natural culmination considering that Death Row Records was really, you know, founded in 91, 92. Um, it just was so much around that year and around this whole movie that just made sense to come together. Well, you know, the police brutality has always been a major, you know, situation out here. That's where the rappers would always rap about it. And then when that actually happened, it made the rappers seem like they were, you know, telling the future. Either they seen the, or they seen the future. And then it spoke to the justice system of how we're treated unfairly. So it was like all of that in the equation of us being rappers and being young and adolescents who have faced criminal cases and faced court. It just didn't feel right, and it felt like we was an uprising within us where we had to rise. And, you know, when those things happen, they're not planned and they're not timed. They just happen. It's a spontaneous moment, and I feel like that moment is just as important as this movie because it tells you exactly how it happened and why it happened. Man, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Shout out to his family for allowing this movie to actually come out. I mean, he's one of the greatest actors to ever grace the screen, and he did a phenomenal job. He left it all on the screen. If this is his last performance, it is uh, Oscar-worthy, if you ask me. I love the way Tyrese can just jump in character and become that person, and you believe him the whole movie. This was deep because he had to play a father of a young teenager in the city of Los Angeles dealing with all of the things that he probably was dealing with as a teenager. So to reverse that and to create a, a character and to make it believable, have passion, heart, soul, I mean, I rooted for him on screen. I really rooted for his character. Well, 92, it felt good. You know, I was trying to figure out who I wanted to be and what I was trying to do. And, you know, Dr. Dre and the whole Death Row family took me under their arms and created my whole vision on who I wanted to be and helped me to become who I am. So to be able to do it again 30 years later as the owner of the record label and me and Dre still having a beautiful, you know, brotherhood, that's what it's all about, about maintaining that friendship and putting good good music and good chemistry back into the world, you know. When we make music, people love it. They, they smile, they dance to it, they reminisce, there's moments connected to it. So we just wanted to give you one more moment. Just a great piece of art. I just want people just to enjoy a great piece of art. There's really so many messages and lessons in here. It's hard to try to pinpoint one as opposed to just respect the art and the craft and no one understand that this actually happened. It's a real story and we can be better by watching movies like this. It's really great to work with him. He's in very intense actor. Every time he shows up, he brings it. He knows his material inside and out. Uh, so I think just seeing a professional like that work uh, is always, I'm always, you know, in admiration of, of that kind of dedication to the craft. Um, getting to work with him on a personal level was really fun. He's a no bullshit kind of guy. He's fun, he's crass. Uh, and getting to hear about his experiences through his 40 year career in Hollywood was really great.
A lot of times we see Tyrese as this fun, bombastic kind of character in the Fast Furious uh, franchises, but you know this he dug deep and he really went for something a little more raw, a little more gritty. Uh, so I thought he did a great job. Just having you know having Snoop on board is so cool. I mean, Snoop's as as big as he's ever been right now. He's hosting the Olympics. He's doing things I never thought I'd see Snoop Dogg do, and I love it. So. Hey, by the way, well, it, that was our second film together. We did the Iceman exactly a decade ago. I love how you know tenacious he was. He was so on point. He never left the set. He was like, for me, he was an amazing partner because Ray, after he trusted me. So we had like kind of like a partnership that we could really manipulate moments together without anybody knows that he was together. So he was a real partner for me and um, I'll miss him. He was an amazing friend and um, a great artist. And you know, that's life. So I, I hope he would be proud, you know, watching his last movie going all full throttle. <laughs> and I chose to do this movie when I read it for the first time. It was just after the George Floyd um, Minneapolis um, event. So I was like, how ironic that I'm doing a movie that happened 28 years ago. And I feel that I'm going to read it. And I was just like, it's still happening. So an OG like Snoop, you know, is something that this movie need to have. Because if we don't have it, then you're like, then who represents this film? Who is behind it? So, yeah, Snoop definitely represents South Central LA and um, The Chronic was the year that he, you know, came up with debut album. So, 92 is a big year for him.